hello guys welcome back to my youtube channel so today we are at the university of manitoba in canada and as usual in search of masters and phd opportunities so first of all we'll begin today by looking at the english language requirements so we'll just get it out of the way once and for all so this is the graduate requirements or admissions requirements page and straight away to the English requirements and if you scroll down you see a list of countries that are exempt from producing English language um, test and here I can see my country already Nigeria I can see Fiji there is Ghana here I can see Kenya United Kingdom of course Guyana Ireland. You can see the very long list here, Singapore, South Africa. So hopefully your, your country is on this list. So if your country is here, no need to produce any of the English language tests within here. So if your country is not on the list, you might want to take one of these exams and look at the cutoff mark or the minimum required scores for IELTS 6.5. For TOEFL, we have... Um, 86 and this is the breakdown and for other um, English language exams so that's it we're off now to the funding requirements or the funding opportunities at the University of Manitoba in Canada so there are lots of info here on external scholarships previous winners and things like that so they'll be concentrating on this particular scholarship the university of manitoba graduate fellowships and as you can see here it's worth fourteen thousand canadian dollars for master's students and eighteen thousand for phd students and it says you should please check with your department for how to be considered for a u m that's university of manitoba graduate fellowship Application deadline, please contact your department. So lots of emphasis have been placed on contacting the departments. So let's read more about this scholarship. Let's see more. Let's get more info on what we need to put together. So we've clicked on the scholarship and now we have more info. And by the way, there are other kinds of scholarships here as well. Some of them are external, like the Venia scholarship is an external scholarship. You can read more about it if you want. And there's another one here, the Clarence Elliott scholarship, which is about 10,000. But let's go back to this one. So yeah, we've seen the value already, 14,000, 18,000 for masters and PhD um, respectively. And it's... um. It's also good to know that there are some other small perks or other scholarships flying about depending on your department. And we'll be looking at those additional scholarships together. Because some people might say that this 14,000 or 18,000 might be too small, but that might be partially true. But you can get other kinds of funding, and I'll be showing you that very soon. I could add to this to bring it up at least to 20, 25,000 a year. So the application requirements are also written here. And um, other things you have to read, like you have to have a GPA of 3.0 and I think over 4. I think Canadian um, GPA is over 4. And there's this emphasis on contacting your department. That you have to get more info in your department on the deadline and the application process. So let's go to the departments and see. Let's go to the departments and see what it entails. So let's click on this. So it's a very lengthy list here of different departments, both in the practical sciences, social sciences, humanities, medicine, law. Um, I remember that someone got the, um, a scholarship or an assistantship at this university in, in French, actually. She got into the French program and she got funding as well. So let's use, let's see, animal science, for example. So you want to apply for animal science. How do you go about it? So we'll go to the particular animal science website. 
and see the info here then we'll go to graduate programs so there are lots of programs here both um, graduate and undergraduate so we're going to graduate programs so here it gives you a summary of what the department is all about what they do and it's very important to read these bits of info here so you get exactly what they do and they're able to summarize it in your own words and probably write it up when they ask you to write like an essay or statement of purpose why you want to study at this university and at this department these are the things you mention not um, copy and paste but said in your own words of course there are some things you cannot um, some words you cannot substitute like some technical terms that you cannot substitute like microbiology is always microbiology but what i mean is that you don't copy and paste the entire thing and um, write in your and paste in your statement of purpose but read it digest it and turn it out in your own words so there are descriptions here of what the course will entail and um the structure of the course there's a thesis base there's a course base there's a, the one on phd so you get that all um all clear here so what do we do for that we we'll get more information on um things like deadlines how to apply so you might want to see some of these tabs how to apply an um, application admission calendar and things like that so you might get useful dates here useful dates on the admissions calendar or how to apply and some other things here so it is necessary to look at these things and then what about to apply itself so to apply you can see here things about things you need to do before you even start applying the online application platform things about application fees required documents so let's look at um let's look at department application requirements so department application requirements we see the different application requirements here so remember we're looking at animal science msc phd so it has taken us to the web page for the applications requirements more description about the course what is it what it entails as you can see here a two year masters and everything then course based thesis based for clarifications read through and see the difference between the course based and the thesis based masters and see which one is best for you of course you can also consult departments to ask them more questions on these so application requirements for a masters in animal science you need a bsc in agriculture as you can see here and then you can see the deadlines it said for resumption for the different resumptions you can see the different dates here there's a deadline in june there's a deadline in first of october there's a deadline in february for canadian applicants and u.s applicants so for international applicants you can see the dates here as well for um fall for winter for summer so you can see the dates here as well so have this in mind why you are applying the closest deadline to us is october 1st but if you cannot meet that don't worry you can meet um february february 1st next year of course to resume september next year as well September that's for um, winter January and summer in um, May so I must say as well that um, an application fee there's an application fee of a hundred Canadian dollars it's quite um for most Canadian universities I do not want to say all it's quite difficult to get application fee waivers unfortunately you can try but uh, many people have tried and have been unsuccessful I think Canadians are a little bit, Canadian universities are a little bit um, strict about not waiving their application fees. So, of course, you can do this for other um, courses as well. Um, let's go back to the application requirements page. So, I'll show you something quite quickly. 
So it's good to go back to the application. So you see the list of courses from A to A to S, yeah, not A to Z. So check for them and see um, what is important and what is not important for you. So let's go back. So application page, and here they said contact, um, make appropriate arrangements with your advisor then contact potential references. So this advisor, I think they're referring to are professors in the university. So professors in that university or in that department that you intend to, to study because most scholarships, most assistantships come in form of teaching assistantships or research assistantships. So you have to work with a professor and then you get tuition waiver, you get stipend. So you need to know somebody most times in the department. And this is how to go about it. You go to the department page and see the different staff and faculty. So we're back to the Department of Agriculture and Food Science, Animal Science generally. And then you can see the profile of the head of department. You can see professor and acting head and then faculty academic members. Is what I tell people that if it is not clearly stated whether you contact professors or not, or you do not know which professor to contact and you have a number of them in mind, you can go through the department head and make it clear to them that, hey, um, good afternoon, or dear professor this, dear professor that, or in this case, dear Dr. Kim Meniski, now you introduce yourself, Tell them your academic, or tell him or her your academic background. Um, state your intention that you want to study in this department. Um, show what you've done in the past, your project, work experience, and things like that, the results you've got. And tell them that is it necessary, is it compulsory to find a professor to support your, your research? And probably tell how him that you've checked the profile of certain professors and you think either professor this or professor that um, research interest aligns with yours so are you allowed to um contact them directly it is important to do this because some departments match you automatically with the professor you do not need to contact the professors personally but it wasn't written here on this department page so i think you might go through head of departments to clarify and the success rate is often higher if you go through the head of department if you create a rapport and then he or she might advise you on what to do to get the attention of other people that could supervise you it might even be the case that he or she is actually even the one to supervise you in the first place that is if your areas of interest align and that's it guys i hope this was useful we began with the English language exemptions. We have a long list of countries here exempted from the English language test. And then we went to the University of Manitoba graduate fellowships for master's and PhD students. So, but before we go, we could look for extra, as I told you, extra funding, extra perks, because apart from these ones you see here, there might be smaller scholarships here and there that could help you or augment your income. So you could click on this. Let me go back there and do it slowly. So this is the funding page. This was the one we looked at. And then browse all graduate student awards. Then when you get here, you could click on the category you belong we could go back to agriculture and then we could go back to um unrestricted yes asking for your citizenship you're not canadian <clears throat> and then just go straight to unrestricted and then click on the search button so here there are several small awards here this is about six thousand could help you solve some problems or augment what you've received already this is just 100 so they differ in quantity this is um 3000 this is quite a lot you see so for those in the agri department and it's also stated here how you are nominated or how you can apply for this most times you're nominated by the faculty or your department directly 
So just add this to your regular um, your regular stipend or your regular assistantships. So you could check here and see for other opportunities that could just augment what you get in already. This is 18,000, quite large. So you see, apart from the 14,000 and 18,000 that we saw, you can actually get more money from the department. So do this for your own for your own department. I just showed you for um, agric science. You could do this for biochemistry. You could do this for anthropology. You could do this for the rest of them. So check around. And as I said, somebody got this an assistantship from the French department at this university just last year. It could be you as well. So just try your luck and we cannot wait to celebrate you as usual. So guys, try to utilize the materials on this channel. There are other wonderful videos on this channel that might interest you. So get to work, start putting your documents together and start applying. And then we'll see you at the top sooner than later. So bye-bye for now.